ahead and view this information on the recording. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know we're going to have some, some more people joining us, but I want to make sure and give Joanne plenty of time. I am Robin with Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. Thank you all so much for being here today. Um, we're so excited to have Joanne Miller here to talk about a very important topic um, regarding creating a business plan. Uh, I do just want to go over just some general housekeeping tips before we get started. If you have, if you're having any technical issues or questions, please feel free to type that over in the chat box on the left-hand side of your screen. I'll be happy to help you out. If we have any people that are on the phone only because you're having trouble getting signed into the webinar portion of this presentation, go ahead and send me an email to robin at sanctuaryfederation.org, and I'll go ahead and respond to you via email once we get started. I do want to mention, you might notice that I don't know if it shows the participants the number of slides, but it says slide one of 124, and I know that seems like a lot of slides. I don't want to, I don't want to mislead anybody. There are not that many slides. Um, it just had to do with how we had to get the transitions to work. Um, we should have plenty of time in the hour to conduct the presentation and then plenty of time for Q&A also. We are going to have a PDF copy of the slides available as well as a great template for a business plan that Joanne has put together that she's utilized and has, has given out in the past. Those will be up on our website along with the link to the recording in the next day or so. And after this webinar, I will send everybody in attendance an email with all that information. So you'll be able to download that template, you'll be able to download a copy of the slides, and you'll be able to access the recording. So definitely watch your email for that in the next couple of days, next day or two. Also, Joanne is more than happy to take your questions during the presentation, so please feel free. If you have questions throughout, type those into the chat box. Um, I will try to pass those along during the presentation. If we don't get to it right away, please don't worry at all. I'll make a note of it and definitely pass it along to her during the Q&A. Um, so, again, I just want to mention if you have questions, technical problems, please feel free to type that in the chat box. I'll help you out. If you have questions for the presenter, Please also feel free to type those into the chat box, and I will pass those along to her throughout the presentation. And again, thank you all so much for coming, uh, for, for participating today and being here. Um, we look forward to bringing you more webinars on a monthly basis, um, hopefully more than one, but um, please watch your emails for more information on those upcoming sessions. So it is now my pleasure to go ahead and introduce your presenter for today. Joanne Miller is the Executive Director of Brook Hill Farm, and I do want to mention that you'll see the pictures throughout this presentation are all equine pictures. That is the area that Joanne works in. However, this business plan she has utilized for organizations all across the board. It can be utilized for any of you. Her template can be used for organizations of any kind. So please keep that in mind, but the pictures are geared toward equine because that's where Joanne works. Um, as I mentioned, she's the Executive Director of Brook Hill Farm. She's on the Virginia State Horse Advisory Council. She's also an adjunct professor of equine science, and she's an equine specialist in mental health and learning. She's also been recognized by the Homes for Horses Coalition and its sponsors, the ASPCA, as a leader in the field. So it is now my pleasure to go ahead and pass this over to you, Joanne. Thank you so much, Robin. Welcome, everybody, to my presentation on how to create a business plan. Um, as Robin said, there is a tutorial available, a template that I use with my college students that's really easy to fill out, so please don't feel like you have to take detailed notes as you're watching. As she said, my name is Joanne Miller, and I specialize in horse rescue, and obviously am a part of the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. So let's get started. How many of you feel like this when it comes to your paperwork, when we'd really rather be working with our animals? I think that's about all of us. But our job as, a, as directors is to earn the money to be able to take care of our animals. So my solution to this is a business plan. One of the most, um, the most important things that has ever been said about our organization was said by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. They uh, complimented us on our business plan, saying that we clearly told the story of our past achievements and highlights our strategic roadmap to the future. And I think that is the purpose of a business plan, is to show your roadmap of where you're going and how you're going to get there. 
So there are eight main parts of a business plan. We're going to, I'm going to tell you what the parts are, and then we're going to go over each one individually. The first part is a mission. Then it's your programs. Next is your data, your SWOT analysis, and I'll explain all this in detail, your finances, your strategic vision, your timeline, and your succession plan. So all of these things make up the business plan. So it seems like a lot, but I think as we go through it, you're going to see that it's really not that difficult. The first thing is your mission statement. Obviously, all of you listening probably already have a mission statement. It tells who you are and what you want to do. As I was researching for this webinar, I wanted to get an example of a really good mission statement, and I picked one from the Center of the Great Apes. This is their mission statement. The Center for Great Apes' mission is to provide a permanent sanctuary for orangutans and chimpanzees who have been rescued or retired from the entertainment industry, from research, or who are no longer wanted as pets. If you listen to that mission statement, you clearly know who they are and what they want to do. You should have a logo for your organization. Your logo brands you. It's really important that when people see your logo, they immediately identify it with you. The, horse, the smiling horse in the horseshoe, everybody associates with Brook Hill Farm. The next part that you want to add into your business plan is the organizations that you belong to or that you work with. Brook Hill Farm works with the ASPCA. We're part of the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. We are the horse rescue for our, our county, Bedford. We are a PATH International Member Center. We work with a home for every horse, the Thoroughbred Charities, the Equus Foundation. All of you work with different organizations. This is where you want to list those. What programs do you have? That is the next part of the business plan. Let me give you an example of Brook Hill Farm and then we can talk about how it might apply to your organizations. Brook Hill Farm does horse rescue. We do rehabilitation mostly of sport horses or injured horses. And what we do is we, we help them heal and then we retrain them. We also have an equine assisted learning program where we aid personal growth and development of life skills through horse interactions. And of course, we, we um, provide retirement and sanctuary for our horses. Community outreach. This is where we can talk about what your organizations do. If you're the elephant rescue, do you give tours? Do you have workshops? If you are doing wildlife, do you have educational programs for the community? Do you have a membership? Do you sell items? All of these things are, should be listed under your programs of what you're offering. Another thing that's really important in a business plan is to use graphs to show, uh, that gives a quick view of where you are. For instance, again with Brook Hill Farm, we do horses. If you look at the blue on my chart, we keep 30 to 35 horses on property at all times. But we're really kind of a throughput organization because we do adoptions. So as one horse gets adopted, another horse can come and, and get help through the, the facility. So at this point, we have done 423 horses. So again, a graph can show your growth. If you look at 2001, we started very small, and you can quickly see how much we've grown. The graph, there is a graphing um, application on Microsoft Word. It's very easy to use. You pop in the data, and it just comes up with a graph. Another thing to be including in your business plan is your values. Um, what do you stand for? Um, just to give you an example and a value would be Brook Hill Farm exists to carry out and inspire the love, care, and responsible stewardship of horses and people by staff, volunteers, and participants. You might have something like, you do not discriminate on the basis of race, color, national origin, sex, religion, etc. These are all values. These are a good thing to put in your business plan so your donors can see exactly what you stand for. Organizational data, a lot of people like to see numbers. 
So you want to put your data in there. For instance, how many horses has Brook Hill Farm done? I had told you we had done 40, 423. Other things as far as organizational data, how many members do you have? How many educational programs have you done? One of the things Brook Hill Farm does is has college interns. Well, last year we had 42 college interns coming through, earning some college credit. How many volunteers and visitors do you have? We had 796. Now, I know to all of you that sounds a lot, but if you think about if you have a school group of 30 participants and you have you know, a few school groups come through, that adds up really quickly, and it shows how much community support or community involvement you have. So it's important to put these numbers down on paper. Your recognition should be part of your business plan. For instance, have you been in the newspaper? Have you won awards? Are you part of GuideStar? Have you been on television? How about all the things that have been written up about you in magazines? What I do is chart by the year and then just list any recognition that we have received. Again, this is really good for your donors to see. And if it's in your business plan, it's all in one place. Your euthanasia policy. A lot of people come to the farm and ask, how do you feel about euthanasia? Well, they may ask my volunteer, they may ask one of my employees. We all have to be on the same page and have the same answer. So my euthanasia policy is in my business plan. You can put things in like why you would, what, why you would choose to use euthanasia. Is it for terminal illness? Is it for suffering, quality of life, disease transmission? And you also may put in there who is, who is able to do this. Is this only done by a licensed veterinarian? So I think that's a really good place to put your euthanasia policy, and then everybody's on the same page. My favorite part of the business plan is your strategic vision. It's really fun to plan how you want to grow. For instance, in 2012, Brooke Farm decided we needed more stalls. So we had a major capital campaign to do that. You may need more fencing. You may need more land. You may need more animals. So how do you want to grow your strategic? And then the SWOT analysis. First, let's go over what a SWOT analysis is. S stands for strengths. W stands for weaknesses. O stands for opportunities. And T stands for threats. So our strengths, this is a pretty easy category to do. I think we can all attest that of the strengths of our programs. And many of the Brook Hill strengths that I'm going to share with you are probably strengths that you share as well. For instance, we all have a clear mission. We all probably have passionate, experienced leadership and committed, enthusiastic volunteers. We have strong alliance with professionals. So it's such as the Global Federation. We have a reputation track record, and many of us have longevity. We have defined proven programs, and hopefully financial discipline. As at Brook Hill Farm, we have a par partnership with the county for equine rescue. And we also partnership with local colleges for interns. So as you're putting down, your, doing your SWOT analysis, th think what is strong for your organization. And how about your weaknesses? We all have weaknesses. The biggest one we have is low pay for spa staff, specifically leadership, lack of a major donor, fencing, lack of an indoor arena. Because we do our rehabilitation work, we need to be able to work when it rains outside, and a need for more staff. I think many of you can think about where your weaknesses are in your organization. And how about a lack of endowment? How many of you have an endowment? An endowment is such an important piece of your organization because how are you going to sustain your organization if something happens to you? Your opportunities. This is a fun one to do as well. For instance, in the field of equine rescue, we have plenty of unwanted horses that need help. Probably you all have the same 
we have a need for a rescue facility in our area. A need for volunteer opportunities. College intern need. And community organizations needing partners. These are all opportunities. And threats. And I think the big one that we all face is the economy. I think the economy, we have seen that people are not donating as, as much to our organization. So that's definitely a threat. For Brook Hill Farm, it's a lack of an indoor arena because we can't do our work with the horses if there's bad weather, and therefore we can't get them up for adoption as quick as we would like. And another problem at Brook Hill is we have a return of horses. Um, if you adopt a horse out to a young lady who's in the ninth grade and she keeps the horse for four years and she goes off to college, the parents may not want to keep the horse. So that limits rescue, so they return the horse to us, which limits rescue spaces for new horses and needs. So that's a threat for our organization. So think about how this would help you, where you would have your threats. And, of course, a lack of endowment is a threat. The other thing, I think, with a business plan is we forget that we actually have an economic impact on the communities that we serve. In the horse industry, nationally, there's 460,000 full-time jobs, $39 billion spent, and $1.9 billion in taxes collected. Okay, so how does this affect, say, the elephant rescue or the wildlife rescues or the chimp rescues or any of you? Well, you buy feed from your local feed stores. You have local veterinarians. You are all putting money into the economy, and I think it's important to show that. We all need to have a board of directors. A board of directors is who is overseeing what we are doing and trying to raise the funds for our organization. And you need to break down exactly a flow, a flow chart of how your organization works. For instance, Brook Hill Farms Board of Directors is divided into two parts. We have an executive committee and an operations board. And underneath that is the executive director, then the assistant director, the farm manager, the college interns, and then all of our programs. What's really nice about the flow chart is anybody who looks at my business plan knows who reports to who. And you want to have job descriptions for everybody in your organization. And this even includes your volunteers. If you, ha you should have a written policy for each job description of what they're, what they're expected to do. One thing that I really find helpful to me is a pie graph of our income sources. And again, this should be included in your business plan. So last year, when I looked at the Brook Hill Farm um, income, this is what I saw. I saw that programs brought in 30% of the income. Businesses brought in 5%. Individuals' donations came 42%. Grants and foundations, 21%. And events, 2%. So looking at this pie graph, I could easily see that I need to work on my events to bring in more money. And I'm obviously not tapping the business community hard enough if they only got 5% of my money coming in from local businesses. So a pie graph to show exactly what percentages of your income is coming in is really important. And I think you'll find on many grant applications they ask you this question, what percent is your, don is your income sources? So by having this in my business plan, I can just pull it out and put it right into my grant. The financials. And this seems to be everybody's hard part about how to do the financials. So we start with the financials with a donation income. And I'm just going to use random numbers, and I tried to pick easy numbers to make it easy for everybody. Um, so let's say our individuals brought in $5,000. Monthly donations. I'm hoping most of you have monthly donations, because monthly donations are wonderful donations, because you know that you're going to get that money every month. A lot of ours do it through Just Give. Um, and they are wonderful because I know that the money that comes in every month I can count on. Major donors. Let's just say I bring in $5,000 in major donors. And for businesses, $3,000. Grants and foundations, $5,000. My program fees. Okay, so what could program fees be? I have a big number there, but what if you, have the what if you offer an educational program? 
You know, that's a fee that somebody would pay. What about your memberships? What about workshops? What about if you're selling items? I would put those probably all under program fees. The next number would be scholarships. Scholarships, we do scholarships for our horses. A lot of people do sponsors, you know, sponsor a chimp for the year, you know. That's where that money would go. So you could show that that's revenue coming in. Your event money. And then maybe your capital campaign money. Kill Farm, that would be maybe for my indoor arena. So anyway, my total revenue for the year would be 64000 And I would do that for my second year and third year that I've been in business. So, my expenses, same thing. My program expenses, program expenses. What did it cost you to buy all that inventory for your selling of items? What did it cost you to put on those educational programs? And of course, I have horse expenses. You would have animal expenses. What did it cost you to feed those animals? How about your salaries? How about occupancy? Even though somebody may give you the land, you still have money bills such as power, phone, and those kind of things. And of course, of course your capital project, which was the indoor arena, because hopefully you're starting to put some money away for endowment. So here's my total expenses. So on the next slide, I'm going to just put that all together, and you're going to see that the total revenue was $64,000. And my total expenses were $63,000, so I basically have a profit of $1,000. And of course, a lot of people say, well, you're a nonprofit organization, you shouldn't have a profit. Well, it's not really a profit, it just goes into start my second year. So I make sure I have money in there to, to feed the horses the next year. Now, when you're doing a business plan, one part of the business plan is to project out for the next five years. So how do we do that? Again, I'm going to take very simple numbers to make the math easy. And I'm going to use my major donors. And I'm going to say that my major donors for the first year gave me $5,000. And the second year, they gave me $10,000. So now I need to project for the next five years. So now we get into the math. We have something called a growth percentage rate, where we're going to take our second year, subtract our first year, and divide it by the first year. So I'm going to go through this step by step, and then if you have any questions, please ask. So I'm going to take my $10,000 number from the second year, subtract my $5,000 number from the first year, and divide by the first year, which was $5,000, which gives me 100% growth. Now, hopefully you're all laughing at me because how many of us would love to have 100% growth? We all would, but again, I'm doing it to make the number simple. So we're going to take 100% of $10,000, which is 10000 and to get my first year number, I'm going to add the $10,000 that I just got to the $10,000 from my second year and get $20,000, and I'm going to put it in that number. <coughs> Excuse me. So you would go on and continue planning that out using this formula. Does anybody have any questions at this point? We've got a couple of questions, um, Joanne, but I think these, those questions are better towards the end. I don't have anything on the financials right now. <clears throat> okay, sounds good. I'll keep going then. Thank you. So anyway, the strategic action plan, that was the fun part of it, planning what we want to do and how we want to grow. Let's just say, for operating expenses, the present year, I had $5,000 from individuals. Next year, I want $8,000. Well, how am I going to get that? What do, we, what do you say we expand our mailing news list or our monthly newsletter? Those are ways we may be able to grow our individuals. We may be able to have ask friends for friends numbers or, or um addresses. So those are ways we could grow our individual donations. Our monthly donations. Again, I can't stress to you how much how important monthly donors are. Brook Hill Farm gets about twenty five hundred dollars in monthly donations. So how in the world do we work on that? 
we want to convert some of those annual donors to monthly donors. For example, I just had a lady that gives me $100 a year. And I just talked to her and said, hey, how about instead of giving me your check for $100 a year, you give me $10 a month. Well, what does that do for me? First of all, instead of $100 a year, she now gives me $120 a year. Not only that, but that $10 for me buys a, buys, almost buys a bag of feed, and I can count on it every month. So monthly donors are wonderful. So in my strategic action plan, I want to convert at least five annual donors into monthly donors. And you would go on down the whole list. For instance, program fees. How are you, you, the present year and the next year, how do you want to grow it? So you have a plan. And then you have a five-year plan. And this is just general for your strategic action plan. And again, I'm going to use Brook Hill Farm as an example. So our cap, capital project, we wanted to raise funds for that second arena in, in 2014. And since I had a 100% growth rate, I can do that. So in 2015, we're going to build that arena. And then in 2016, we're going to create and fund programs to use that second arena. Now, for all of you out there, that's not what happened, <laughs> but it, it was what we would have liked to have happened. So each year, you're going to update your business plan. And we'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> At the end of your business plan, you want your contact information, and you want all the contact information you can think of. You want your legal name and your status of your business, your contacts, the address of the main office, the main telephone, your e email, your website, your business incorporation date, your employee identification number, and all the people who are important to your business, maybe your accountant, maybe your insurance, legal counsel, financial counsel, consultant, anybody who's important, you want their contact information there. And your succession plan. Many of us are founders and are now executive directors, but we all work really hard and want to see our business continue. We want to continue helping these animals. So how are we going to do that? At Brook Hill Farm, there is a job description for my job as well as a pay scale so that if something happens to me, they can hire somebody in my place. I think a succession plan is very important, and it's important to your donors as well because your donors want to see that if they give you a large sum of money, say a donor gives you $100,000, they want to know that if something happens to you or something happens, say your organization can no longer rent the property you're on, that you have a plan that their money will still go to help those animals. And that's pretty much it for the business plan. I update this each year in January. I get my numbers for the end of the year and just put it into the business plan. So each year I am updating. I change whatever programs that we've added. I update the um, recognition page, I update the financials, and I do it at the first of the year because I have all the data from the last year. And the other thing about the business plan is it really helps us in so many ways. It keeps us really focused on what we're doing. For example, if somebody comes to you and says, I want to have a school group of kindergartners come out to your farm and have elephant rides. Well, you can say, that's not our purpose. Even if you want to pay us a nice amount of money, that does not meet us our mission. And you can find, look back at your business plan, even though it's tempting to take that offer, not to take it because it's really not on, based on what you do. So I think a business plan really helps to keep the whole organization focused. It helps keep your finances um, up to date, and it also lets you see the big picture. It lets to see where you've been and where you're going. It also helps with GuideStar. Many of us use GuideStar. All of you have filled, that have done it have filled out those reports. GuideStar um, used to be a real headache for me, but once I had a really good business plan, it's really easy. It's just cut and paste, cut and paste. Businesses. All businesses have a business plan. So when you go talk to another business to support your organization, if you can show them a business plan, they understand that, and they'll be more likely 
to donate to your cause. Accreditation. All of us have gone through the accreditation poli um, policies for the global. <clears throat> I can honestly say when I filled out all that information, it was really easy because it was all included in my business plan. Major donors. Major donors love to see a business plan. If a major donor comes into my office, I have a packet with my business plan in it that I hand to him to take with him so he can look and see exactly where we've been and where we're going. And you never know. Somebody may walk in and say, hey, I see that you need an indoor arena by your business plan. I see that you have a plan for this. I see you have a succession plan. I'm willing to give you that money because you have a plan. And grants and foundations. Um, a lot of people I talk to um, are kind of overwhelmed with the grant and foundation applications. Again, a business plan, is, you can just about cut and paste just about all that information that they ask for from the business plan. So that's what a business plan is all about. Any questions anybody has? I do have a few questions that have come through, Joanne, and, and everybody feel free to type in your questions if you like. We've got plenty of time for Q&A. Um, okay. Talked a little bit about this during the presentation, but we had a question asking, how often should an organization update their business plan? Is it a one-time thing or a continuous update? It is a continuous update. Um, like I said, I like to do it at the first of every year because then it's current. And I think if you think about your grants that you're doing, your GuideStar report, your reaccreditation, if you update that, I take the first two weeks in January, go through my financials, and just kind of plug and chug on my – once you have the business plan done, it's just a question of adding the next year. And again, your projections, you just project out one year. Once it's done the first time, it's a little bit more – a uh, little bit more labor involved, but once you've done it once, it's just projecting out that next year. Maybe your strategic action plan has changed a little bit. You know, it's just updating. So definitely I do it once a year. Great. Thank you. Um, we have another question. Is the business plan a public document that could or should be put on your website? I do not put my business plan on the website. It is available if people want it because obviously, um, you know, we are transparent. I do have a shorter version that is kind of I use for the public, and when I say that, I don't include the financials. It's more just who we are, what we do, how we've been recognized, and maybe some of our programs or policies and our contact information. So again, I make a shorter document from my regular business plan, and I'll be glad to share that. Um, if somebody is interested, they can email me. I'm going to go to the next slide and show, give you that email address. And I can tell you exactly which parts of the business plan I do include in that. Um, but I don't usually um, do it as a public document for everybody. I usually use it for my major donors, uh, my business businesses, and definitely for the grants and foundations. Great. Thank you. Um, and then we have another question asking, is it sufficient to say you have a succession plan or do you actually put details into the business plan? I found that people want to see the details because if you just say you have one, you know, they, they want to see the details. At least my donors want to see exactly what's going to happen to their money. So I actually have in my succession plan, I have three different possibilities. One of them is that something happens to me. One of them that is something happens to our property. And the other one is, what if we dissolve? What would happen to the money in our organization if our organization was to dissolve? And what we do is we say it would be given back to one of the other, either another equine rescue or to one of our, you know, partners such as the global, so that they know that the money stays in animal rescue. Thank you. Um, and just got another question asking, do you develop projections based on several past years or just the prior year? When I'm doing my projections, I do it using that growth percentage rate formula, and I do it on the previous year. Now, if you've been, like we've been in business since 2001, so I might do an average, because some years are not as, as good as others. Like, for instance, in Brook Hill Farm from 2008 to 2009, we actually had a loss which 
you know, related to the fact that we were building. Um, and so that didn't really show where we were going. So I do it two ways. I do it kind of as an average once you've got a lot or and also from the previous year. I think both are important. Hope that answers. Thank you. Um, we've got another question asking, should the business plan be developed or reviewed by more than one person? That's an excellent question. Um, in our organization, as the executive director, I put together the business plan, and then I bring it to my board. And my board of directors, um, kind of like an annual plan, I mean, it, we use it as an annual plan as well, if you think about it, because that's included. My board of directors approve it every year. So it is definitely reviewed by our board. And, and they do make suggestions especially on, this, on parts like the strategic action plan and things like that. Um, my accountant obviously reviews it, you know, so definitely reviewed more than one person. But we have one, we, I develop it, and then they, they give me feedback. Great. Thank you. We don't have any more questions at this point. I'll go ahead. I just want to mention again, and please feel free while I'm doing this, everybody, if you have questions, type those into chat. Uh, let me go ahead. I'll pass this one along before I start. Oh, we've got a couple more coming through. So um, we have a question. Do you ever include a detailed projected expense budget? No, I sure don't. That I have as backup documentation to the business plan. Because, again, that's something that, that changes. Um, you know, like, for instance, in, in Virginia, we had a really cold winter, so my detailed projected expense of hay was definitely not accurate. So that's just kind of our backup document. To the to the to the one in the business plan, and if you have a question about that, I'd be glad to discuss that. Thank you. Um, what are common mistakes which could make the business plan unsuccessful? I think by not following all the different parts, um, just like that person said, can we just put in we have a succession plan, succession plan. I think you need to go through the process, and I know it's kind of painstaking the first time, but I think you need to go through the process and have it all there. And I think if you do that, it is going to be successful. I think that the key is, and, and, and also keeping it updated every year is very important. Um, I think the biggest mistake people make is, oh, well, I don't need to include my values or my euthanasia policy or whatever, and then somebody comes to you and says, you know, what is this, po you know, how do you feel about that? And you say one thing and somebody else says something else and then it kind of falls apart. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, do people overpromise and underdeliver? Could that not affect future commitment by potential donors? Um, ask, a, ask them to ask a little bit more in detail exactly what they're looking for. If you could, could expound on your question a little bit, that would be yeah, thank great. You. Thank you. Uh, yes, Haley, you did hear that correctly. Joanna put together a great template business plan um, that I will go ahead, I will send everybody in the next day or two an email with a link to that, as well as this recording and a PDF copy of the slide. Joanna has also very graciously agreed if, if you want to look through that template and fill that template out and you'd like her to take a look at it, she said she's more than happy to have you email that to her and she could take a look at it. So, yes, you definitely did hear that correctly. We will be sending that out. And thank you, Joanne. So right, and I'll, be, very and, and I'll be glad to. Um, I do this all the time. This is the way I give back to the rescue world is um, I will be glad to review it and give you, you know, some suggestions and that kind of thing. So, you know, my email is up there. Please feel free, and I'll be glad to help. And I see he's. You said, for example, provide unrealistic, if somebody provides unrealistic objectives with unrealistic timelines. Yeah, I think you saw me do that in my PowerPoint presentation. I wanted to raise the funds for an indoor arena. Well, um, those of you in the horse world know that's about $100,000. It was really an unrealistic to think I could do that in a year. So I think that's why we update it every year. So in the first in that one it said I'm going to get the ring, you know, I'm going to raise the funds in a year. The second year I'm going to build it. The third ring third year I'm going to try to use it. Very unrealistic. So 
year I'd say, okay, we only raised $10,000. It's going to take me the next three years. But I think that's why when you review, you can be honest with your donors and say, hey, we were totally unrealistic. We thought we had a major donor that was going to give us $100,000. They didn't, they didn't give us the money. So now we're back to our seed money. We have the 10000 and, you know, we back up and do it. And I think if you review it every year and you share that, you know, share those, those things with your donors that, they, that you were not successful and why. And I think they really appreciate it. And also, donors love to be asked to help. So that's the perfect opportunity to say, hey, we had this fall through. Can you help us? Great. Thank you. Nicholas said, okay, thank you. It comes down to updating it yearly, too. So. Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, I will go ahead. I, if anybody's got some final questions, I will. I want to, again, say thank you to everybody for attending. Thank you so much for a really informative presentation, Joanne. We appreciate it, and all of your kind help afterwards also. Um, again, please watch for that link in the next day or two with all the information that we're going to be passing along. Um, you can watch for up the upcoming webinars also in the upcoming months. But I don't know if there are any more questions. I'll leave it for a minute in case anybody has any final questions. Um, and again, thank you so much for Joanne. It was a great presentation. Well, thank you for having me. And please, um, don't feel free to contact me with any questions you may have. Well, it doesn't look like we have any more questions coming through, so I'll go ahead and I'll um, leave the room open for just a second or another minute or so. But um, again, thank you everybody so much for attending, and thank you, Joanne. And other than that, everybody have a good day and watch for that email in the next day or two. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Joanne, so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. You still there, Robin? Yes, I am. I'm getting ready to shut the room down. Okay. We have. I hope that was okay. Out. Yes, it was a great presentation. Thank you so much. It was great, and lots of nice thank yous in the comments. So. Good. So his full name is Joanne Miller, and I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll put it in the chat. Okay. It's Joe, J-O, capital, and then Anne is a second word. There you go. It is a Perfect. Okay. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Hey, thanks again, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and close down the room. Thanks, Joanne. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. You still there? <laughs>